good. Hmm. Fresh? Why is that not showing live? Shows we're live. There we go. Hello, welcome back to Occupy SF TV. I'm your host, James Cartmill, uh, Independent Citizen Media uh, at Weebly, or sorry, .weebly.com. And tonight we have Rick again co hosting. We're going to be going over American history and uh, current politics, uh, the relationship of the Federal Reserve Bank to the U.S. government. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Rick, you had uh, an agenda to start with. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to start out with a quote from George Orwell, and that's, uh, One does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes a revolution in order to establish a dictatorship. Hmm. And that's what you'll see a lot throughout history. It happened, again, I'll talk about the French Revolution that happened in uh, revolutionary France when uh, Robespierre became the leader mm -hmm. and the uh, terror happened, eventually there was a coup against him that um, pretty much ended that and then brought in Napoleon and then that was a dictatorship. A little bit different, but, you know, about the same end. Uh -huh. So, what you see <coughs> with the current climate is you see a lot of revolutions popping up. You see a lot of things out there in the world at large, like in Egypt and places similar to that. What happened after Egypt? Mm, in Palestine. Mm -hmm. Palestine, all through the Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened in Egypt after the revolution ended? Um, well, the leader there became a dictator in all but name. He suspended the legislative branch and suspended a lot of judicial orders, basically took control entirely of the country and its three branches of government. So you see a lot of the time that there will be a revolution staged or there will be a revolution that's fermented to establish a sort of dictatorship <coughs> in the aftermath. There's a lot of money to be made in war and revolution. There's a lot of money to be made in a lot of the things that you'll see happening. As the destabilization of, mid of the Middle East certainly helps uh, the U.S. rather than harms it, but that's a whole other topic. Um, but tonight I wanted to talk about how a lot of the time I'll hear people saying that this is a Christian nation and, and if you don't want to accept these beliefs that you're being told about a religion that, necessar that aren't necessarily true, by the way, but um, you'll hear a lot of people say that this is a Christian nation. Yes, the pilgrims were Christians, certainly, and, but a lot of the founding fathers were actually deists, which was an enlightenment period um, belief system. They mm -hmm. basically believe that nature proved the existence of a divine creator, but that that divine creator had no um, no power over what nature did or what humanity did at large. Mm. They even refer to um, Christianity and the Bible as a whole other entity, entity altogether. Uh, in the Treaty of Tripoli, Article 11, John Adams and his administration wrote, As the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslimin, and as said states never entered into any war or act of hostility. It is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between these two countries. Mm -hmm. So you'll see one of the founding fathers right there decisively says that this is not a Christian nation. You have Jefferson also who championed... Well, uh, why do we have in God we trust on our money? That's a whole other thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's the Federal Reserve and 
what they decided should be on our monetary system. Really, that's a Freemason symbol. And you can see that in every kind of conspiracy theory movie or any kind of thing dealing with the Freemasons, you'll always see the same symbol that you see on the back of the dollar. Mm -hmm. And the Freemasons are, uh, as Thomas Paine wrote, they were actually um, descendants of Druidic, of a Druidic belief system, um, similar to the priest of ancient Egypt, sun worshippers, basically. Uh -huh. They saw Christianity <clears throat> as replacing the sun uh, with Jesus Christ, so they just did away with Jesus Christ, and they basically worship the sun, and that's why they put that on the dollar. That's why you have Sunday. That's why you have a lot of things that you see. And, well, I mean, you've seen Esoteric Agenda. Other people can watch it, too, but that'll go through that whole thing. But mm -hmm. Thomas Paine... Esoteric Agenda, yeah, that was great. Yeah, Thomas Paine spoke on this. He actually wrote a pamphlet about the Freemasons. And he interviewed several Masons. And uh, some of the viewers might not know. Who's Thomas Paine? He's one of the guys that helped start the revolution to begin with. He wrote Common Sense in 1776. And mm -hmm. that, her, I think it was January of 1776. Common Sense? Common Sense. It was a pamphlet that was distributed. That's kind of like what I was talking about with the French Revolution, how people would write pamphlets and things and essays. And that used to be the early form of kind of what you'll see now. Kind of what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, bloggers, uh, other free press mm -hmm. people, other uh, citizen journalists, live streamers. Okay. Exactly. I see. So he wrote that pamphlet and it was the actual, I think it was the first uh, bestseller in the United States. Mm. What was then the colonies of Britain. But, you know. Well, thanks for the refresher because I, a lot of this stuff I forgot. I remember some of it from the school. Mm -hmm. uh, way back and um, you know I think that that going back through history you're, you're well versed from our discussions and I uh, enjoy this I think that's great uh, I remember Thomas Paine uh, but uh, it's good to have a refresher go ahead and continue oh yeah um, well <clears throat> they also the Masons it's kind of changed since the I would say that period, the 1770s, it's kind of changed since then. It's become that Lucifer is the one that's to be worshipped, that he's the light bringer. He's Venus, the morning star. And Lucifer's only actually written in the Bible one time, if I remember correctly. You'll see a lot of parallels with what they encode in things, but... It's okay. a lot of people believe that most of the founding fathers were all Freemasons, which is actually not close to being true, ver verifiably. Um, I think there's around 30 percent that had involvement throughout the founding fathers, but Jefferson was never. Um, there's no proof that Jefferson was a Freemason. There's no proof that John Adams was a Freemason. There is definite proof that Benjamin Franklin and Washington were Freemasons. Right. But just because you're a Freemason doesn't necessarily mean that your ends are going to be nefarious. It just seems to happen, you know, more often than not. Uh, in the French Revolution, the Duke of Orleans, he was... There's a lot of... Uh, historians that believe that he actually fermented the revolution and caused a lot of the grain shortages that led to it. That's the conspiracy theories of that day. They believe that the aristocracy was intentionally uh, hoarding back grain so that the people would starve and eventually revolt against the king. Some of the people that wanted this king out would do that, and some of the people that wanted the king in would do similar tactics to mm. keep the king in. Politics has never really been clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, speaking of politics and, and money and politics, I'm going to uh, digress for a second. Uh, something that, that the Occupy movement was really into is getting money out of politics. Um, 
You know, and then you look at the way what wages that these senators and congressmen and the president make, and then for life as they retire, they make a continued amount of you know hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, or, uh, over a hundred thousand dollars a year for just being a retired senator or something. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Those people have plenty of money. I mean, hoarding uh, is sh money should be as much of a, a problem as hoarding cats or something in a trailer. Yeah. So, you know. Well, that's part of the problem. Another part of the problem is that they're all bought and paid for by corporations. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> right, right. And yeah, that's, the, that's the major corruption of our day is... Well, people, you you know, the funny thing is, it's like, I've seen these uh, posts on Facebook, you know, and the water's polluted and the food is all polluted, and you, you know, you can't eat or drink anything, the air's polluted, you can't breathe, you know, you, what are you going to do, eat money? <laughs> you know, you're going to breathe money? I mean... I think it was <laughs> Jonathan Swift that said when the, when the poor have nothing left to eat, they'll eat the rich. Yes, eat the rich. I think that was mm. Jonathan Swift. I'm not real hungry for rich. Here they taste nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. Okay, so we've got Brian. Looks like he's ready. Uh, I'll go ahead and give him a call. Okay. Uh, okay. Get him in on this. Go ahead and uh, get ready there for that. You were... Hey, we're on. Yeah, how's it going? Are we on live? Yeah, we're live. Um, welcome back to the show. Baron from WTFRLY.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the radio show, right? Oh, that, that's the website. That's yeah, the website. The radio show is with that, of course, yeah. And, and you have a, a weekly uh, radio show? Yeah, it's on Saturday evenings right now, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, hopefully we'll do some more airtime really soon. Uh, we're just trying to figure some things out. Great. Well, you know, if you've got some ideas and you want to get more airtime, um, you know, uh, let me know, and I'll, I'd be glad to discuss some, some issues and stuff and, and go over things that, uh, that you might have for an agenda. Um, yeah, for sure. Are we not doing video? No, I didn't. I didn't get you in on that because I didn't have time to set up a whole bunch of other software programs that I would need to run this. Um, it was just too too short a notice on time to get everything set up to get you in on that. Um, but we'll get that video set up. We'll have to do a test one of these days, and we have some free time. Spend like an hour or so getting that together. But uh, That's cool. I've got uh, Rick here. He's doing a. a History 101 presentation. We're just kind of uh, I've interrupted him a couple times. <clears throat> he was talking about the founding fathers and uh, well, you saw the the blog post. So modern politics and the Federal Reserve, etc., and so forth. The corrupt system of the day. <coughs> do Do you have that link for me? The the live stream link, so I can uh, put that out. Yeah, that uh, live stream link. I can just tell that to you. It's uh, U S T R E dot A M forward slash capital H small X N K. Yeah, that, that's the one from the other night, huh? Okay. Yep. That's the same one. Occupy SF TV on Ustream. Uh, so. I'll let Rick get back into what he was talking about here a minute ago before I uh, interrupted him, and then you were you were ready to call in, so I figured it was a good time to get this going. Yeah, well, yeah um, what I was saying is uh, Jefferson pretty much back on the issue of religion in the United States, how they say that this is a Christian nation when it was actually founded by deists, but... Um, the writer of the Constitution, Jefferson, he championed the cause of dividing the state from the religion. And separation of church and state is actually attributed to him. There's a few more mentionings that it could have been attributed to someone else, but I think that's one of the founding principles that we need to return to. 
Yeah, it's it's something I've been hearing a lot, especially around here. You always hear that this is a Christian nation, and maybe the pilgrims were devout Christians, but not the founding fathers at all. And that, that begs the question: Were they even uh, were they even Christian, or were they Protestant, or were they which one were they escaping? Uh, you know, we we know what we've read. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah, exactly. The The quote that I started out with was, uh, one does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes a revolution in order to establish a dictatorship. And what I thought that related to today is exactly what happened in Egypt with uh, Morsi. He uh, basically took over that revolution and it became his country for a time. Sorry about the video feed. I'm just trying to fix that real quick. For some reason, we uh, lost that, but we still have audio going through, it appears. Uh, so uh, go ahead, Rex. Sorry about that. And, um, I mean, you see all these riots happening in Egypt. You see all these riots happening all over the world. And what's the end of all this revolution? What's going to be the end result of it? Are we going to have a terror into it? Are we going to have something similar to um, what happened in the United States after we removed ourselves or supposedly removed ourselves from Great Britain? Is that? Yeah, I'm still getting the audio feed because uh, go ahead and say something. I don't know what happened to the camera. It's killing me here. Mm -hmm. Not good. But uh, go ahead and continue on because I know the audio feed's coming through. I can see that. Okay. Okay. And what I'm seeing now with the uh, drone attacks and the notion that we should have that on uh, domestic soil, that these things should be used simply to uh, subdue the populace that that's a violation of the fifth and fourteenth amendments clearly and without due process it leads to anarchy and that's what you saw in um, the terror during the French Revolution that's what you saw somewhat after the Civil War you've seen a lot of things that are I would say that we've had three revolutions the Civil War would, would be one um, the actual revolution and then the cultural revolution in the 60s. And I'd say those were three major turning points for, for society. Um, can somebody tell me if they're getting a picture? Because I'm getting trying to do a refresh. Sorry to interrupt again. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, I have the video feed. You have a video feed? You're getting it? Yeah. Okay, so you see me holding something up? Yeah, I got you on the video. Okay, that's weird. Because I'm not, I'm having technical difficulties on my end, but as long as you're getting, go ahead and proceed then. I'll uh, just deal with the technical difficulties on this end and try to figure it out. I wanted to know what you thought on that. <laughs> just now? Mm -hmm. uh, can you give me a quick refresh because I was trying to do something else? I was, I was asking Baron. Oh, on Baron? Yeah, yeah, as far as the revolutions go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, w which which part? I was just kind of listening to you. Oh, uh, just the fact that they use revolution to establish dictatorship. Hmm. Yeah, uh, the, the same chaos, out, uh, I mean, order out of chaos, the, the Hegelian dialect. Um, I think that there is a... So, I mean, a lot of revolutions are co-opted and are steered or infiltrated, you know, however you, you know, and those are three different things. Um, and I think that steered or infiltrated, a lot of it is kind of a, uh, those are three different things. Um, you know, all, all these, all these entities, they're, they're parasites. They're, um, you know, so even, you know, at a certain point, you cannot stop a revolution. You can only attempt to direct where it goes. Um, 
And I think that that's happened a lot over history more than we know. Um, you know, for example, you, you look at the Arab Spring, you know, as they call it, the, uh, each one of those revolutions, Libya, Tunisia, Egypt, um, they all have the same, the same hallmarks, you know, the, the people were ready to, you know, have a revolution, but, you know, they just needed a little push and a little, um, you know, or, and there was room for infiltration and, well, you know, like I said, I think that, um, you know, if a revolution doesn't know where it's going, you know, and it's just going, then there's naturally going to be trouble because, you know, a lot of people get caught up in, well, who speaks for us and, and who's the leader? And you mean like Occupy? For? Yeah, in some ways, you know, and I think some of the some of the sects tried to, you know, keep that from happening by having it be faceless. And, you know, they're, they're really both, both sides of that coin are, you know, leave you, leave you with the same opportunity for um, infiltration. And... Well, yeah, it was open by design. That was the way they originally designed it at uh, Occupy Wall Street, so... And, and I mean, that, that's a great thing. I wasn't saying it's not. It's just... Um, yeah, well, I was really embedded, and it was really hard to work with people to get projects done because some people were flaky and some people were in for it for their name for some people were scamming for money or who knows what um, some people were there for actually peace and love and solidarity um, and I know a lot of those people uh, they stayed around those are the people that I was looking for and they stayed around there's uh, actually quite a few of them but there were a lot of slackers and mooches yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think that at the end of the day, what has to happen is that really there just need to be more more strong-minded people in it. And, you know, that, that's part of the revolution is educating people and giving them, you know, giving them a guidepost so that, you know, not only do you, you know, so that the, the whole crowd or more of the crowd is strong enough to watch out for infiltrators. And, huh. you know, that, that's not an easy thing. Um, yeah, that was, that was fun, watching people come and go on a consistent basis. Um, and it, it's certainly not easy to spot. And you can, you can spot people after a while. Especially the, the provocateurs were pretty easy to spot because they would come in um, and they might be just regularly weird. But the police gave them 20 bucks or something and sent them down, you know, to Bradley Manning Plaza to Occupy San Francisco, gave them a bottle or something, said, go down there, there's a shindig down there, go have a party, cause the problems, have a good time, whatever. We won't, we won't mess with you, you know. Um, right. So that kind of thing definitely went on. I actually knew somebody that was sent from Golden Gate Park uh, told me that, that the police had told him that Occupy San Francisco was going on as big, big thing, and he should get down there and, and join join up on it. And he he said he was you know homeless living in uh, living in the park at the time. So, uh, but anyway, back to what we were talking about. We kind of got off the subject for a second, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's that? I found this uh, before before you get back into. It, I found this picture. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna send this to you over your Skype. Okay. So I, uh, so I'm gonna sign it on my other one and send it to you. Hold on a second. Friend you. Well, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about how the Freemasons had a hand in the French Revolution, or supposedly had a hand in the French Revolution, as well as our revolution, and how uh, Thomas Paine had stated in one of his pamphlets that. Freemasonry was basically a um, a descendant from Druidic beliefs and such revolving around the worship of the sun. You see a lot of that. A lot of people suppose that the Egyptian uh, 
priesthood had some something to do in the early days of Freemasonry. Yeah. Well, that that is accurate. That that's really where it comes from. And and over the years, it, it's become. In, in short, without getting too far off into that, because I, I, I've actually done a lot of research into that, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the the knowledge, j just the word occult, uh, comes from, you know, in, you know, meaning to hide uh, a certain culture or body of knowledge, and. What, what happened over time was that all this knowledge that these societies are holding back or were really, te you know, the, the Freemasons were teaching it to themselves and then the Freemasons were infiltrated over time by many different groups, mainly the Illuminati the Bav or the Bavarian sect of the Illuminati because the Illuminati goes back a long time also. Mm -hmm. But, the, you know, the, the, where, where it gets off kilter is that the uh, the Bavarian Illuminati is the is really this Rothschild uh, um, culture that uh, which really came out of Rosicrucianism and Hermeticism and uh, the Kabbalah and other things like that that really got twisted over time. But but in short, as far as the knowledge goes, the knowledge was very pure and it was really just giving human is the the mastery of their body end of the universe and understanding the you know the cosmic connections and what happened over time is people figured out that that's powerful stuff and all these different societies um, restricted in some forms you know the, the Mayans knew about it the Aztecs knew about it the Olmecs um, you know and, and, and all of this all this really without um, I don't I don't ever like to say anything that, that I don't readily know to be true um, so I, I don't want to get off into anything that, that I um, can't readily prove, but I, I've seen evidence of. Um, but basically, all that knowledge does come from kind of the same place. And what happened over time is that the Freemasons were, you know, were involved in basically building strong leaders or strong people. Um, you know, and and out of that through infiltrators and other you know other things like I said there's a lot of different um, societies out there and individuals even that were like I said infiltrating and you know a lot of the founding fathers as you said were were masons but uh, you know we really because of the secrecy of we really don't know who was doing what in that because masonry is very very deep and just the fact that even even the masons did in essence, steal the body of knowledge, and it's not really about stealing the knowledge, but they, they, <clears throat> the, the, the wrong deed, I think, um, comes from diverting where that came from and, and really holding back the true power of that stuff. Um, well, they kept it to themselves. They haven't shared it. Whatever, you know, if, it, if there's some sort of special knowledge and it's, you know, secretive, you know, I mean... We live in a, in a day and age where we could feed and clothe the entire planet and provide, uh, you know, medication or whatever is needed, a homeopathic. You know, we could do a lot of things a lot differently uh, and a lot better than what we're doing. And with the big pharma, big oil, big bank, it's all being suppressed. Big energy, you know, we could have free energy. We could have sticking up for... Well, no, of course not. I was just dialoguing, but yeah. You know, trying to weigh in a couple cents here so it's not just a two-way. Hmm. <laughs> two-way talk street there, but yeah. I uh, know, I mean, I agree with you, absolutely. And, and you know, my, my, my purpose for getting into that was to at least, and because a lot of, you know, one problem is that a lot of people lose a lot of people get lost in the language and the terms and, you know, occult, Illuminati, Masonry and all that stuff, those are not interchangeable. I know you know that, but a lot of people don't, you know? Right. Well, there's, there are, yes, I do. Um, you know, let me just digress on this one, one quick second. I've been going around asking people if they were familiar with Building 7 or, you know, uh, uh, various 
things if they drink the water around here because I've been told that it's polluted with, uh, what was it, a chromium? Hexavalent chromium and arsenic. Right. So, you know, do I really want to be drinking that? No. Do I want to be um, using fluoride? No. Do I want aspartame? No. You know, um, these are the things that, that I like to discuss on the show and, and bring out how, you know, here in the local area, the water supply is tainted um, and they don't really tell the public that they'll pull a well offline, whatever. You know, but the, the public around here, a lot of them aren't aware of Building 7. That's something that I've been doing lately is asking about Building 7. Your local convenience store clerk at 7-Eleven or, you know, whatever, they're just oblivious to it. Um, and I talk about the Federal Reserve and all the corruption, this, that, whatever. And uh, some of them are young, some of them are old. You know, I, I poll a variety of people, whoever I run into. And uh, a lot of them are just... Um, plain oblivious. They're they're like zombies. Um, I feel that some of them just there's no hope. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm so sorry I'm late. I had a emergency, so it's all taken care of now. So catch me up. What are you guys talking about? Well, just a, a variety of things. <laughs> I just got talking about the zombies. <laughs> but uh, we're going to let Rick get back into his thing, and that'll probably bring you up to, to speed at where we're at and just jump right in. So let, okay. uh, let you get back into it, Rick. Yeah, um, I was talking about um, the separation of church and state being one of the biggest um, one of the biggest and greatest things that the founding fathers have done. Um, that is something that I've always believed should be separate from one another because what happens when you have a state that's intermingled with a religion is similar to what happened with uh, the Roman Catholic Church and then you have um, you have it to where a lot of the people buy their positions within the church and then that becomes an institution and that's kind of been replaced with the Federal Reserve in my mind yeah, I don't know what happened there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we, yeah. we can hear you. Uh, you must have dropped. Yeah, my hearing has been kind of wacky lately. Uh, I really don't know. Um, well, I've been having some trippy stuff going on here tonight. Normally, I don't have this many technical difficulties. Anna, are you still there? I think we lost Anne, too. Uh, let me call her back. Boy, all kinds of technical difficulties tonight. Technical difficulties? Yes, are you there? I'm here. Okay, and let me bring the group. Baron? Oy vey. Let me try something real quick. I'm going to hang up on both of you real quick and try again. All group. All right, so we'll get Ann and Baron back in here. I'm here. Okay. Uh, for some reason, Baron's not connecting, but uh, he was having technical difficulties. So uh, go ahead, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, but as John Adams said in the treaty of Tripoli. Article 11 of that, that the United States is not inherently founded or uh, a part of the Christian religion as a state. And it dates back to that early, which I, I think it was or 1797 when that was wrote. Hmm. 1797. So, so are you saying that religion wasn't an inherent part of the Constitution? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, we can hear you, Bron. Uh, and Ann had a question. Yeah. That was the religion. Yeah. Is not originally um, part of of what the foundation fathers. fathers wanted for this country. It wasn't a Christian based state. Yeah. Okay. 
I remember that from school. We were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did we get how did we get God in the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh, and on our money. Yeah. But anyway, go <laughs> yeah. go ahead, Rick. I'm gonna try to keep directing here. That's the that's the church taking over again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much. So. You know, you know what's really crazy? The, uh, you know, the church is is doing their final uh, conclave meeting right now before they go ahead and vote on the pope, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how how versed a lot of people are in this stuff, but the uh, a lot of things are very much lining up right now, and I have no idea what to even make of it. You know, because I don't like being a sensationalist, but um. It's very interesting because the, you know, with all the scandal going on in, inside the Vatican, you know, it, it's unbelievable to me that, and, and really this, I think, is a testament, you know, it's, it's truth to power that, you know, they, they do have the world dumbed down to a point where it is, it, it's impossible for people to really pick up on this stuff um, because there, there is a... You know, if anyone remembers their history, you know, they know that the Vatican is, you know, fraught with, you know, conspiracy and plots and all kinds of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And and now now that it's yeah. twenty, you know, twenty thirteen, and people are like, oh, conspiracies don't exist and and whatnot. It's just really funny to me that that um, I guess it's not even funny. You know, it's, it's just sad. You know, it makes me chuckle in a way. But but it's um, you know, that's kind of all you can do. Um, you know, you. And really, I think where I was going with that, you just have to kind of, you have to pick pick people out, you have to pick through people and recognize who has the ability to appreciate, you know, information. Um, that, that's the only way that, you know, otherwise you, you know, I think everybody has the ability to wake up, but, you know, they have to be given the right information and, and a lot of people will, it'll take longer than others. Um, and, you know, just in terms of time, you know, that, that's something that's, that people have to be very sensitive of because you know time is not on our side and you know that that's what we have to really uh, master. Right. Okay. So, uh, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that's what I'd say. the The church has a long history of trying to control nations and controlling nations. That used to be one of the greatest, well, Jefferson even called it a corporation in one of his uh, one of his letters. He was speaking about corporations, and people would equate that today to what we know as corporations. But early on in uh, that period, that's what you'd call a corporation, like a religious order that was similar to a cartel. And uh, they really wanted to keep that kind of, corruption out of the system. Other corruptions came in through industry and other things like uh, lobbyists and such, but that was the original intent to keep the church out. Yeah, you know, just another little fun fact, the, uh, you know, the church has been setting up, um, you know, they, they have state-of-the-art surveillance already, but they've been going the extra mile this week to uh, to lock everything down you know they're even going so far as to jam uh, electronic signals you know cell phones anything Wi-Fi uh, that's not approved um, you know they're, they're trying to uh, I believe right now that they're discussing all the scandals the pedophile stuff and everything else the uh, and specifically like the financials because you know the that's one thing that's not on the on a lot of sites is the Vatican Bank stuff. Um, but you know what was really crazy is that they're, um, you know, it's it's easy technology for them. For example, they have cameras that are, uh, you know, security cameras that, that will read lips. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know things like that. Um, you know, hmm. we're... We're kept from a lot of this surveillance technology, even what is, you know, already into the uh, into the public sector, but, you know, people are kept away from it. Um, well, you know, and the funny thing is, is like we were talking earlier on how 
how sheeple they are, zombied out. They don't they're not aware of Building Seven, and they they think there's really terrorists. Um, but you know, there's a whole lot of other things that that, that go on there. It's just. I don't know. Um, I actually wanted to get, yeah, like get back to... The not ready for it. The mind has to be prepped for that. What's that? I was saying, I, no, I agree with you. Their minds are just not ready for you, and their minds have to be prepped, you know, and it's got to come along at the right time, you know, uh, with the right amount of information. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been a pretty pretty aware of, of the water situation since I was a kid and being, being a conservationist and things like that, I grew up uh, kind of as a hippie, I guess. Uh, around hippies, definitely. And, you know, when you see the water supplies being tainted and, gen you know, the first time I heard about it, genetic engineering, and I thought to myself, and I was a kid, this was back in the 70s, and I said to myself, genetic engineering, I don't know, that just doesn't sound right. You know, uh, changing genetic structure of something that was done uh, naturally. You know, we don't know what we're doing. That's like, um, you know, experimenting on yourself. But, you know, the corporations are experimenting on all of humanity. Uh, the, the military, you know, whatever. You know, the 1% even. You know, we are the guinea pigs. Right now, actually, more it's not even guinea pigs. They just want to reduce the amount of people on the planet. So, whatever it takes, right? right? Yeah, you know, the, um, uh, you know, 322 this year is the 33rd anniversary of the Georgia Guidestones. Ah. Uh, the Georgia, what are they, Guidestones? Yeah, Georgia Guidestones. Yeah, I, I don't know about those things. Those are pretty freaky. Yeah, I, I I wonder about it myself. You know, it's um, you know, it's hard to know what um. Well, what are they for the listeners? It's basically in in this in the middle of a uh, field. They just they just appeared at one point. Um, in Georgia, they are in the northeastern corner of the state, where there's a. Uh, it was a real granite-rich area that's basically the granite capital of the world. And some some wealthy uh, benefactor basically put up these huge stones. And it's kind of a, uh, it kind of looks like a, a mini Stonehenge. Just, um, and it's a different formation basically, but it kind of, it gives that kind of feel to it. And there's these big, tall, um, they look like, they look like tablets, you know, they, they, look, they look like, uh, you know, kind of like what you envision in the Ten Commandments to be written on. And, you know, it's in different languages, and it basically lays out the case that um, human population will be re reduced to about 500 million people. And um, it's very mysterious. Nobody knows, well, I shouldn't say nobody it's not public knowledge as to where it came from, who paid for it, you know, how they even got there. Um, right. Wanted uh, well, Bill Gates pretty much said the same thing. <laughs> yeah. He's well, the Bilderberg. Right. No, the Bilderberg said the very same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the whole Bilderberg situation, the whole new world order, the whole, they want to reduce the population. That's always been been on the agenda. Mm -hmm. well, sure. They're doing it. I mean, it goes back to Albert Pike's writings, you know, um, you know, Albert Pike foretold three world wars and lo and behold the third one is basically here now. Um, Really, if you, even if you follow the, the Pentagon and DOD, you know that that we've been in World War Three since you know 2000. Um, okay. Between currency wars and trade wars and, and the like, um, and covert war. Well, you know, I think that you know. Like I said before on other shows, and uh, I, the reason I do this is so that we can hopefully 
uh, continue to spread the word on things that are going on. I try to change the topics. Uh, they keep them the same, more or less. They're still the same. But uh, I wanted to get through some more of this history here with Rick. He's, he's got a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, uh, like I said, we were talking before, and he knows his history really well. Um, <laughs> yeah, really. I'm ready to talk about anything. Right. Or listen, rather. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, you had uh, Andrew Jackson, who was, you know, he, most Native Americans know who Andrew Jackson is. He's the guy that pretty much helped destroy their way of life. But one thing that he also did was institute the spoil system into the political um, landscape in America. It was, before then, you kind of took your opponent on as your vice president or your secretary of state or any number of offices that you do. That kind of ended with Andrew Jackson. On the flip side of that, he was very much opposed to a Federal Reserve of any kind. Um, so you have a lot of people in history like that, that they did a lot of good things, but they also did a lot of bad things. And you'll see that again with Theodore Roosevelt. He was kind of a warmonger. He would go out and, you know, but he fought in wars and he did his time, I guess, but he did eventually go out and break up uh, Standard Oil later on around the turn of the century in the 20th century. Um, but you have all kinds of presidents that have done things like that and talked about a uh, hidden government, a shadow government behind our actual government. Theodore Roosevelt said that, Jackson said that, uh, Kennedy said that right before he was assassinated, I believe. It was not not too long after that speech that that happened. Um, <laughs> so it's pretty serious things that, that's going on with what these people are saying. If you have a government that's the military-industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about. Um, all these different presidents, all these different leaders have talked about the same thing. It's kind of hard to ignore when that happens. But, but they're contributing to it themselves. In a way. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt, I would say, he was an established man, but he also broke up trust in the end. He tried to a lot of these people that said this are people that recanted on things that they had done earlier. They pretty much broke from the system. At that time, mm -hmm. and uh, Jackson was, like I said, he was terrible at the same time that he did a lot of good things. You have a lot of people dotted throughout history like that. Right, well, sometimes you look back in retrospect and go, oh gosh, you know, I screwed up. Mm -hmm. What can I do but say that I screwed up and, and tell the people that I screwed up? But uh, a lot of people don't know this about, like, say, the Federal Reserve. Uh, who was it that, which president was it? Well, it was instituted after the Civil War, uh, or the protein Federal Reserve. It wasn't really the Federal Reserve that we know as it today. It, it, it's gone through some changes yeah, between gone, then and now. It's gone through some changes. And, um, or it's actually yeah, they had to get some other people out of the way first. It, it, it's rumored that, uh, that they, that they were having to kill off, uh, Jacob Astor and a couple others. Um, and then Jacob Astor, yeah, I remember that was, uh, there was a, uh, that was a special on him and, uh, Zeitgeist, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's in Zeitgeist. Uh, okay. I've read it, uh, you might be right. I've just I've read a couple of different things that have confirmed right. that, and um, <clears throat> yeah, because there, there were splits, but she, but you know the uh, yeah the, the Federal Reserve was the uh, they had a couple of practice runs, and they they figured that they corrected their mistakes or mm -hmm. enough mistakes to keep it going. Exactly. Yeah. That's um, kind of what I was talking about, you know, the the fact that we have 
a income tax that's been instituted since World War One. The fact that we have um, different things throughout history that you can see it just more and more austerity towards the people. You see us have longer work weeks uh, than most people in the world. You see us with longer or less vacation time than most people in the world. It's all to return us back to uh, pre-industrial revolution and during the industrial revolution slave well, to a, a monetary system labor. We, sell, we have a self-sustaining self slavery at this point. Yeah. Where right. uh, most of the people are just barely making enough to get by. If they're not living on this, off of the system or imprisoned for something stupid like smoking pot or having some weed on them, you know, um, you know, you get $40,000 a year per prisoner, but they only spend uh, $8,000 a year, I believe, on education for children. I mean, what the fuck is going on in this country? You know, and a lot of people don't, don't seem to care. You tell them and they're like, eh, you know, they must have done something wrong. That's why they should be in prison. And, oh, yeah, it's too bad. Too bad, but they got to spend that money somewhere else uh, bombing kids in another country. I mean, oh, so many people just aren't aware. <coughs> yeah, I think Anyone? people are just hampered by, uh, <coughs> you, you, you know the quote, uh, that the individual is faced with the conspiracy so large that you know, they cannot believe that it exists. So I don't know exactly how that goes. Um, but that, that's... Right. That's what's happened. Um, so, um... I'm, I'm going to send you this photo uh, here that I wanted to get to you. Um, I think it will be relevant for our discussion. Okay. If, uh, when you get my contact... Um, I'll this over, but the, you know, the, uh, the Bill of Rights and the Constitution by extension is, you know, it, it's, it's very, um, it was laid into a framework that was manipulatable, um, you know, going, you know, the, the division between the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. And really, you know, the anti-federalists, they were right. Um, you know, it took longer than, or, or I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't even know that it, that it took longer than it was supposed to. I think it's right on time. Um, but, you know, it, the, the unraveling of, of the freedoms in this slave state, you know, is not an accident, you know? Hmm. Exactly. I would say that too. It's um, well with industry. It's kind of started with Rockefeller, you know. Uh, that's the modern uh, way to enslave is through just controlling how the money is spent, the taxes on the money. It's all about financial systems, and if people believe that. Uh, People like the Queen of England don't have power anymore. All they have to do is look at how much funds, and how much of their um, relatives have funds, and what they own. They'll see pretty quick that they have plenty of power. Yeah, that's the modern means. You know, it's my understanding. I, I recently found out that some of the income tax that people pay actually goes back to England. Mm -hmm. How does that work? <laughs> I don't it, know. it goes through the crown, basically. Yeah, through the, the, the crown or to the crown? Didn't we fight a revolution so that we wouldn't be under their monetary rule and well, uh, law? See, see, that's the thing about it is that the uh, the crown is not even the is not even the the queen. It's not the monarch. It's the crown has become 
or well, that that term has become applied to the banking cartel and ah, the, the parliament the whole structure. <laughs> right. Okay. And you know that, like, it, 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 uh, I understand it um, in theory, but I, I haven't been able to pull all the details together yet. I've I've seen a lot of, of actual legal things and put a lot of it together in my head. So so like I said, don't. Um, you know, I, I don't want to give any misinformation, but what I do know is that the, uh, you know, it goes through these international city states, um, especially Washington D.C. and you know the inner city of London. You know that, that's where all these banks are based. Um, you know the 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 square mile is what they call it. It's basically the. Uh, it's it's basically the very center of London. It, it's literally, like I said, about a square mile, and you know it, it's right there along the Thames, where uh, like part of the uh, you know the, the the famous skyline is. Um, but the city of London, you know, just like Washington D.C. is basically an international zone. It operates completely independent from a lot of things. Um, you know, now as far as Washington D.C. goes, you know, there's. You know, both of these things are both of these entities are still governed under under law but you know they're so far outside of the traditional system of law that people understand that that's how a lot of criminality occurs that people wonder well, well how do they get away with this stuff and it's because it's it's literally an offshore banking cartel that, that's um, you know ruling the globe you know between these central banks and everything else and they you know the, the the money flows through this whole legal system, and you know it, because people are unaware of a lot of that, um, you know that, that that's how a lot of things are able to persist. You know, if people want to look some stuff up, you know, like I said, you, specifically you, you want to type in "city of London," uh, you know, into your search, and then. Uh, you know that that'll come up because you'll see a distinction between Greater London and City, City of London. Of London. Um, I mean, hell, the, the 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 map on Wikipedia will show you um, if you go there and look at that. But the City of London is there's actually two mayors of London. There's uh, the current mayor Boris Johnson, and there's the City of London, uh, which whose leader is basically the Lord Mayor, and that that's a whole different thing. Um, that that that's that's how that um, that's kind of the flow chart of that. Hmm. Okay. Good information. Thanks. Yeah. And so so wow. when you talk about shareholders in the Federal Reserve, and wow. you know even above the Federal Reserve, like uh, you know a lot of people don't know, the, uh, look up the Bank of International Settlements. That that's. One of the uh, <clears throat> that is basically the central bank for central banks, and beyond that, you know, there may be some things that I'm not even fully aware of. But um, you know, it, it reaches higher than most people really understand. Yeah, it reaches uh, higher and lower. You're right. All around. <laughs> um, you have to forgive me. I'm trying to think of something to look for here. Go ahead, uh, Rick, if you had... Um, well, it's, uh, it's pretty strange that they helped bankroll the revolution along with France, too. But that was, if I believe, right after the Seven Years' War. I believe that was the Seven yep. Years' War. And that's where we had a world war also. It's, it seemed that really it was designed for the financial takeover to happen from the beginning, as you'd said. And now you're seeing the depopulation from uh, genetically modified corn and fluoride and uh, what else do we have? The 
the corn syrup that they put in soft drinks and <coughs> diet soft drinks, aspartame. You have all these different chemicals that are out there designed to reduce the population now that it's been sent out to... Uh, we've grown to the highest <coughs> level to where we can exploit all of the resources that this world has. Now that we have the capacity and the capability to do that, it's time to go to the next stage for them, I see it as. So, this is the beginning of the end for the Bill of Rights and our amendments. Due process has been thrown out. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, freedom of speech to some extent, yeah. Freedom of speech all over the world. Did you get that file that I sent you? Uh, yeah, I just saw something pop up a second ago. Hey, just out of curiosity. Get, get, get that file because that, that's exactly what he's talking about. It, it goes into how the, See, literally the go? entire Bill of Rights are gone. Bill of Rights, that thing there. Okay, save. Um... You know, the, the, the First Amendment through the Patriot Act, uh, uh, not, not the, uh, um, not, not, not the Patriot Act, but the, uh, the, the Fourth Amendment through the Patriot Act, you know, your search and seizure is gone. Um, you know, well, the First Amendment is under attack from different areas, obviously, but, uh, you know, the Second Amendment, they're trying to pull off with gun control. Um, you know, uh, um, the New World Order is one of those things that they're going to implement it whether uh, we want to or not at this point. So, um, where do we go from there? I mean, I don't want it to happen, but I'm just saying that from what I see, you see a force... Uh, a, um, I mean, it's not gang style. It's not, you know, I mean, you've got, like, police officers dressed in full battle dress, plastic gear on the front of them. They got plastic knuckles, plastic arm guards like they're going on a motocross. They got full face masks and, you know, uh, like they're going to war, you know. Um, this is a war. They're and this is, these are, the these are the police officers, you know, that are beating their own wives and you know I mean I know from statistics that 50% of the police officers are divorced uh, get divorced because of uh, brutality of the police officer and their their spouse um, I'm not saying that women don't do it but it's probably a majority of men um, I don't remember the statistics but uh you know, these are the guys that are supposed to be protecting us. And you know that if the system is corrupt and they have a position of power, somebody can slip them a 50 or or five 500 or $5,000, then, you know, there's a good chance that maybe they'll take that and that they'll do uh, whatever special favor they want. They want that person, what uh, whatever that person wants them to do. So... Well, you know, that I mean, the, the top issue, yeah, you're, you're right about that. It's multi-layered, and, you know, you, I mean, a lot of it is, oh. part of it is naturally just being in that environment. You know, it, it's the same way, you know, if you have, uh, you know, if you have like a, uh, you know, like like a football team, uh, you know, you know, you, you know, regardless of whether people are on steroids or not, you got a lot of testosterone flowing around, and nothing to check the environment, you know, it's going to run wild in, in different ways. Um, but then beyond that, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of police departments, they actually limit, uh, you know, they, they screen people through the, uh, you know, through the application test, you know, that, you know, that there's a, there's a minimum uh, IQ and kind of a minimum score, but there's also a maximum. And if you're too smart, you know, that they might just cut you loose, you know, to begin with, not even unless you threw the academy. Uh, you know, that, that was actually, um, there was a court case about that where, where the judge said it was basically legal to screen cops based on IQ, and the rationale in that particular department was that, you know, they didn't want to have people that were too smart because uh, at least the official reason was that they would get bored and leave. 
or we want to move on. And, you know, I, I think that it goes much deeper than that because, you know, j just between uh, just between the work that needs to be done and, and, and the soldier mentality of being able to follow orders, you know, you, um, you know, people with lower IQs are obviously easier to keep in line. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's uh, a lot of what the poisons out there are doing to people. They're lowering their IQ and they're dumbing them down for uh, basically being mind controlled. I mean, a, a lot of people walking around are, are basically, um, you know, look, um, highly functioning robots. And, you know, and some of them are functionally illiterate robots. I'm not just talking about cops, I'm talking about everybody in general. You know, a lot of people are, um, you know, they're, they're just awake enough to, to be able to perform societal functions, but not, uh, you know, get out of their boundaries. And you mean they're not able to perform moral, ethical obligations? Like if somebody's getting, yelling for help, they just kind of stroll down the street like they did in that episode of uh, Seinfeld. You know, yeah. it's very rare that people will jump in and do something. You do hear about the cases from time to time, but, you know, uh, that's something that, that we promote around here is is taking care of it without the cops. Uh, but I did get this picture. I've seen this before on uh, Facebook. The Bill of Rights. Article 1, Occupy. Article 2, Gun Control. Article 3, Asset Forfeiture. Uh, was it Article 4, Patriot Act? Article 5, NDAA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Article 6, Indefinite Detention. Uh, Article 7, mil Military Tribunal. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, people like you and me are already awake. There's a lot of other people, you know. I think, Moran, as long as we keep doing this and communicating with people, letting them know, and, you know... I try not to lose hope on the sheeple, the, the zombies. I try to keep talking to them and like urge them to go look into it. You know, um, some people have a tendency to look at me funny because, as you know, I usually go around wearing this CIA hat. But um, well, you know. It, it's a balance, you know, you just have to keep that balance because there's no, um, you know, at the end of the day, in a lot of ways, you're going to end up wasting your breath. Um, oh, I, yeah, I certainly don't waste my time. Yeah. You know, there, I, I definitely balance. No, I hear you. I mean, if I have time for a minute to, to throw something at somebody and make them cock their head sideways and, and maybe, maybe just plant a seed in there. Right. Uh, I mean, that's what you have to hope for. Um, and, you know, it, it is very possible, you know, given the, uh, given the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the structure of things, but, you know, you, you have, it, it, like I said, it's, it's a balance. And kind of, kind of I mean, my, my philosophy has changed a lot on that, too. You know, I, I try to give people tidbits wherever I can, but, like, a lot of times what, what ends up, what, what I end up getting into is, you know, uh, I'm so busy doing this thing that you know most of the time I really don't even interact with a lot of people anymore. You know, it's um. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, that's what I mean. Is is I encourage you to, you know, you know a lot about what's going on and just uh, you know as a suggestion, if you coffee shop, you know, you throw a. Just do it for your own giggles. Find out. Uh, I do a personal polling. Basically, is what I call it. I ask somebody a question. And I asked that question to one person or a group of people for a month straight. And I just keep those numbers in my head, which it's really easy. When you ask people if they're familiar with Building 7 and most of them say no, it's pretty easy to tally it up, you know. Right. Um, you know, and I try to ask people that are not commonly in my group, you know, strangers, random strangers, somebody on a bus. Hey, man, you, you know, you're familiar with Building 7, uh, you know, 9-11? You know, and some people are like, oh, yeah, you know, the Federal Reserve is illegal. And, you know, some people will be like, yeah, yeah, I know. And other people would be like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, so. But uh, we've been running a little long, and I figure we can go a little longer. I know Rick had a whole bunch of things to talk about, and we got sidetracked again, as usual. No. But uh, it's always a good conversation. Well. 
but like you, you said something that I, I wanted to uh, to kind of get your opinion on, or, or uh, you know, at least talk about for a second. Um, sure, we got time. Like, like, on that same line, the uh, or overtime, but we got time. The, the um, yeah, because I I, I I was in that same phase, and and you know I, I just kind of. You know, I, I still like to do that talk to random people, you know, that I come across, you know, if, if I'm in their personal space to be able to talk with them. Mm -hmm. um, or at least, you know, like, like a lot of times, you know, like I'll throw a wild card question in the same way. But like, <laughs> you know, what, what I've learned is that, um, you know, a lot of people you can kind of spot. But beyond that, like what, what, you, what you said that really made me think of it was, um, was whether the New World Order is happening. And... You know, whether it's uh. whether it's prophecy or divine plan or whether it's, you know, I, I personally think that it's just a function of math and the way that where this society is at. Math, um, manipulative control. Yeah, I mean, just, but just in general, like in terms of, uh, you know, you, just in terms of the number of people on the planet, the number of people that know things, that don't know things the structure of things and just the way that our world is right now today going forward, you know, the progression of that is, is sort of laid out to a large extent. It's just based on a few variables. And that whole process is something that, you know, a, a lot of people are, um, in a way, fighting against the grain. You know, it's something that is, you know, like you were saying, it's kind of uh, on its way to happening already. And it's not anything that's, it doesn't mean give up. It doesn't mean stop. You know, trying to change things. It just means that you know, you have to be aware that that this thing, the the, the cake is already almost baked, and mm -hmm. a lot a, um, a lot of it is a lot of what's happening is not stoppable. It is reversible, but it's um you know, a lot of things are already on their way, and I think at this point just kind of the macro conclusion that I've come to in a lot of ways is that, you know, you, you can only wake up so many people, obviously. And, and just in terms of numbers, I think that, um, you know, if, if, you know, beyond the, the 1% moniker, you know, it, you know, that, that's another one of the false you know, dichotomies, you know, it, it's a, um, you know, the group we're talking about the you know, the new world order and, and minions and, and associates are probably just, 0.01% of society, which is, you know, 700,000 people, you know, on a planet of 7 billion. And yeah, in terms of that, you know, in terms of that, you know, it might even be less than that, but you know, like the, the power structure is... Well, if you take the Bilderberg group of a couple hundred, few hundred people, you know... Right. Two to four hundred well, I mean, people. I mean, beneath them, you know, b between the the people that that they can directly influence, that right. they know some of the plan. And, Seven hundred thousand sounds like a good number to me. <laughs> and, and you know, it could be anywhere in there. It could be a million. It could be, you know, it could be a hundred thousand. I'm I'm just kind of guessing, you know, because well, since they have, is, they have the um, money and the power, they can affect all of them, all nine, right. all seven billion. Right, and, and, but what what I mean through that is that the, uh, you know, the, there's only, you know, there's only so many of them that are kind of directly plugged into this thing, and, and what's happened is that people are, um, you know, like like one percent is seventy million people, and yeah, that, that's you know that that that's what I mean, that, that's how they're getting us to, you know, they, they're they're getting the people that can see, you know, the people that you know whether it's Occupy or the Tea Party or um, and, and I hate even throwing those labels on there, but you know, when they get into, uh, when they start to be able to see, you know, they, they just deflect that anger, obviously, towards another group, this 1% who is, you know, unaware of the whole, you know, part that they, that, that they are, you know, that they're being, you know, used as pawns also. And, you know, what, what I try to do is just in terms of numbers, you know, to, it, it's about the margins and about waking up those people that are right on the line that can, that are close enough to waking up that they just need, you know, they just need a, a you know, that yeah. one question that you were talking about, uh, you know, to ask them and, and inspire that in their mind. And those are the people that, 
you know, we really have to focus on. And I, I can't even quantify that. I, I wouldn't even try because, you know, yeah. uh, obviously I can't speak for the world, but in America, you know, I, I, I have a hard enough time quantifying that in America myself. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I always like to rock the boat. You know, I, I like that uh, to, it keeps me entertained to ask people things and to get them to go, like, who's this dude asking this question? Like, you know, did I know that I didn't have to pay income tax? Right. I, you know, yeah, you got to pay income tax. No, you don't. What, really? You know, I throw stuff out there, the wildest stuff at them. You know, lately, I've gotten into some uh, real important information that I thought was interesting with the uh, uh, bases on the back side of the moon and stuff, but well, that's a different show. We'll do that another time. Right. Um, but, you know, I've had people tell me that I should have an aluminum hat, but why? <laughs> why? That'll pre well, I mean, that that prevents you, communication you know, with my people. <laughs> well, you know, so. Well, I, I get what I was getting at was, you know, I, like I, what you said is great because, you know, like I, 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 I do the same thing when I can. I just meant that, uh, people really need to uh, pe people really need to kind of like you know if, if we are going to fight back against this whole thing I think people really need to at least kind of get on the same page as far as what we're even doing in this revolution yeah. because you know uh, without that a lot of time is wasted and you know it's not that people you know it's wasted on people that don't matter or anything like that that's not what I'm saying what I am saying is that like it's got to be you know Baron I've been trying to do that for since I got to occupy was you know to communicate right. what are we doing to be part of the communications team and and make the decisions on what are we doing and you know you when you talk to people that are in a, a non leader group and you say hey let's make some decisions and you get somebody going well we need to ask somebody if it's okay or you know and then there's this whole hierarchical structure which is all group based and nothing gets done you know um basically the only reason that i can get the things done now that, that i'm doing you know is because i've made the efforts to go out and reach out and make the contacts and save what equipment buy what equipment i could before i had no money now i have nothing but i do work everything in trade uh, very rarely do I have to use money. Uh, I, I actually refuse to use money if I can. Uh, I'd rather work and barter um, for a place to stay or some food or you know work at a promotional thing where I'm promoting whatever you know you're doing that's good and you know you're helping me out. It's all it's all my one hand washes the other. You know that's kind of the way I work guess now since uh, I'm unemployable I can't get a job and you know the economy sucks it's not 7% unemployed it's 23% unemployed you know they're lying about that too right <laughs> so but enough rambling on we've ran the show a little bit long uh, if you guys want to keep going we can either keep it going or come back for another show later tonight in 15 minutes or or call it a night, we can come back uh, another night. What do you mm -hmm. think, Rick? I don't know. I haven't heard much from Anne. Yeah, I know. I think Anne got off the line. She had some stuff to go Anne, take care Anne of. Anne said she was coming back, I think. Yeah, um, so I mean, if you guys, we've got plenty of stuff that you were talking about uh, politics and religion. Is that her? Mm -hmm. uh, no, she's not on the line. I'm right. back, guys. Oh, she is back. Well, that was good timing. I'm back. Well, yeah. Uh, why don't you guys keep that going? i got to get a drink of water. Okay. So if you want to grab a raisin real quick, too, while I'm at it. Okay. I'll be right back. We were just talking about the control of the populace through the financial institutions. I see. Okay. Um, so we got off religion. Yeah, yeah, we did. We're, we're, yep. we're, this is a no religion section because <laughs> right, right now it's four twenty. All down GMT. It's uh, Rome and the Vatican. London. I hear you talking. I hear you breathing in. Of course I am. You should be doing the same. 
No, I wouldn't want to get too mellow. <laughs> that that might be what you need. Yeah, I know. All right, well, you know what? There's a big jar of it sitting right here next to me. I'm going to open it. I smell it. Oh, God, it just smells so good. Uh, but I'm not smoking any right now because I would be a babbling idiot. I, I couldn't really <laughs> enjoy, enjoy our conversation. So, now, what's the topic so I can get in on this? We were talking about exactly what people need to understand and and it because of the situation, how advanced it is, it you know the, this this society we live in now it, it already has terminal cancer. you know it, it is a new world order, and that's unfixable. but you know out of that can come something new, you know it just depends on what size and scale based on how many people wake up, where they wake up, who wakes up, and, that, and that's kind of part of the way that, you know, I started doing the website, you know, we've had this conversation before, Ann, about reach, reaching out to different kinds of people, you know, that's one thing that I do on Twitter is, you know, you know, I, like, I, I, I talk at people on Twitter, you know, and, and, you know, some of them converse back, you know, but I send people things that will mess with their world, with their perception of the world, you know, for example, like, I, I talk with a lot of, uh, a lot of people in high finance on Twitter, uh, you know, on Wall Street, or uh, that that are on Global Wall Street, and you know what I do is I send them things that that completely are against the dissonance that they understand or know, you know, and I see how they react. You know, a lot of them, a lot of them don't say anything, but you know, sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll see uh, people click on things from, you know, from their network, you know, from inside uh, banks, you know, I can see it on the web analytics and. You know, some people are reading certain things, you know, who knows what they, uh, what that does. And, you know, kind of what I, I've tried to do is basically, uh, you know, speed this whole thing up, mash up the plan a little bit. Because, you know, somebody like that, if they're not, um, you know, if they come across that information and they've never seen my website before, at least, um, what I think that does is even if they're not friendly to that information, if they are plugged into this system, you know, maybe they pass up the chain, maybe they, you know, wh whatever it is that they do, you know, it, it elicits a reaction, whether it's good or bad. And that, that's kind of, I think that that's kind of the path of everybody, you know, is to change things, you know, put, put a glitch in the matrix, basically, you know, the same way that you were talking about, you talk to random people, um, you know, about random things. That kind of effort is, is what it needs in the sense that, like, it's got to be very targeted and direct. Well, and, it's, it's not just random know, things. They're random things of crucial um, importance of today's... Right, right. That, you know, right. That, that's what I mean. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, what you were talking about, you know, you asked them very pertinent questions, questions that should, like I said, mess with the way that they see the world now because you have to, you know, to, to understand this, you know, people are locked into a, a mentality, a mindset, and you have to break that frame for them because it's a feedback loop, it's a decision matrix. And if they haven't thought about a certain thing or they don't know that piece of information, you know, it's either going to get in or it's not, or it's not going to get in, uh, you know, to their head, you know, but if they let it in, then it's going to change the way that they look at things. And, you know, whether... But how um, can you do that one person? You can't do that one person at a time. Well, that, 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 that's, that, that's my point. That's kind of what you missed is that the what we're talking about is it's got to be the, the right people, at, you know, that are in, you know, it, it, you know there, there is no waking up everyone. There's no, you know, you're not going to wake up. You know, if 90% of the people on this planet are sleeping, you know, we're not going to wake up 80 of that 90%. It's just not going to happen. You know, we might, we, you know, depending upon what happens going forward, you know, we might wake up larger numbers or, you know, larger numbers might wake up due to some event, but, you know, if, well, e even if it's a global event that, you know, literally changes the way people look at the world with, maybe it's aliens or maybe it's like some crazy thing going on with the Vatican or something like that, that, um, you know, look at what happened with the Pope, 
you know, when he was, you know, the whole world took notice of that, obviously, you know, but and that was kind of independent of the media, you know, it was going to happen regardless. Yeah, but what the hell, nothing happened because of it. Nobody called them well, on it. Nothing happened nobody, yet. Nobody, no, what do you mean they haven't done it yet? When are they going to do it? They're never going to do it. They're going to elect know. a new pope, they're going to elect a new pope, and they're going to move on. Well, that, well, they're that, not that's, going to say one damn fucking thing about it. Well, that, that's kind of my point is that that whatever is going to happen is going to happen. We're not going to stop certain things, you know, it depending upon what happens because, you know, pe- people are going to die in this. You know, that, that's, you know, you know, whether it's good people or bad people or people that are innocent and don't know, people are going are to die regardless. Are you talking about the revolution? Are you talking about the revolution? Yes. Yes. I'm ta- okay. And, 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 and when I say revolution, I'm talking about just the next stage of where society is at because, you know, point blank, society is in a point where uh, financially... Uh, in terms of warfare, you know, you look at even resources with water and oil. Um, okay, those, wait a minute. Let, let me let me throw wait, something wait, 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 wait a second. Just let me, just let me finish what I'm saying. My point is that all those all those things right there, the way that this global economic system operates every day is something that cannot continue in perpetuity. So by definition, it's going to end at some point. And when it does end. It, it may be slow, it may be fast, but it's, it's, it's going to be catastrophic and it's going to shift the way that everyone lives on this planet. And the same thing applies to, like I said, warfare and resources and everything else. It just depends on which one of those things happens first and what the next stage of that is. But what is guaranteed is that whatever happens, these things are getting bigger and bigger and bigger the same way that, you know, pe- people are like, oh, the debt is at records, you know, uh, you know, in the U.S. or whatever. Well, of course it is because... Not only is inflation happening, but just because you add and multiply bigger and bigger numbers, you get larger numbers. And we have larger numbers of people and these mass movements on Twitter. And, you know, you know, like, for example, you know, somebody famous gets gets on Twitter for the first time and it happens instantly. They get like 10 million followers in a day. It's the, it's that it's that kind of thing. The same thing happens in the economy with a good trade on the stock market, the, you know, with a new fad, the way people dress food, whatever it is, the, you know, and, and it's that human essence, it's that, you know, we, we look at the way we live our life, and, you know, we, you know, we mimic other humans, so the same, uh, you know, we always, mo- most of us try to get the, refine whatever process we're doing to make it better, so just by nature that if something is working, or if it's popular, or whatever it is, that it's going to create these larger and larger trends, so, that's that's why we're seeing crazier things happen, and that okay, that is what I think about our society is unsustainable. Okay, there's something uh, adrift here that nobody's paying attention to, and that's China. Now, do do people do not it, realize it's that large fucking numbers, right? Wait a minute, now this is serious business. Yes, yeah, speaking of large fucking numbers, this is serious business. Well, we're running around posting on Facebook, and the government is playing their little Ponzi scheme with the banks, and, uh, you know, Obama's playing with his drone, you know, his drone set, his little Lego drone set, uh, killing people, by the way. Um, China is buying up all of our major corporations, and not only in the United States, but globally. Now... And they have a huge amount of money still available to them to buy more. What's well, going to happen is that while we are, that, while we, no. so China is already baked into this. Let me finish. Me when I get Ron, Jesus, let me finish. Then you can tell me. Move away from this whole thing. All right, go ahead. I'm not moving away from it. I'm trying to tell you that in the, while we're sitting around wringing our hands and the government is fucking us over. China is taking over the frigging world. Right, and that's what I'm saying. That that's already part of the plan. And even even if they don't succeed at that, it's all it, it's it's been it's been planned for China to move up and to really move ahead of America because right now the only thing short of a coalition of countries or some other crisis that that could take down America, the only the only entity that can take down America is China or Russia, um, you know, more so China. They just can't because take of, us down through an army. They don't have a trained army to take us down. 
I'm not saying you are, are you serious, Anne? I'm it's serious. A, you guys, there's it, it, as far it, as war right, goes, they'll fight right, a war right now, financially. Right now, if us, if we went to war with China right now, depending upon the way it is, mo most scenarios end with a lot of people dying, regardless of who wins or what happens, just because of the way that, uh, because of the type of carnage that would be caused by the type of battle that you would have. And, and right, you know, right now, if China wanted to. If they if, if we if under the right conditions and, and really a lot of conditions, China could overrun America in a lot of ways. If they if well, China I know they to, can do it financially. I'm talking about troops on boots on the ground. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. China could overrun the United States right now militarily. You know, I know that. I'm I'm totally on with you on that. I'm talking about a military invasion. That wouldn't work. Um, but they can pull the plug yeah, on us yeah, financially. Yeah, it, it would. Well, wait a minute, I might, have a question for you. In the, in the system, in this business of um, them taking over, it being planned, what's the advantage of China taking over? Why is it planned that China takes over and gets ahead of the United States? Who would have allowed that mm -hmm. in, say, uh, the Rothschilds or the Bilderbergs or whoever? Yeah. Yeah, the UN stated that China would be the model for the new world, pretty much. So there you have it. And and ju just because. Did you hear my question, Baron? Yeah, yeah, I, I heard your question. The one because it, the people running things, it does not affect them one way or the other. They're going to survive and prosper. They think. In one way, that, and I don't even know. Obviously, I don't know what's going to happen, but you know, they, they're they're under the impression that they're going to outlast you. The way that the way that they're offshore now, you know, that their wealth is in many different countries, and beyond that, they have wealth that is independent of countries. Um, That's right. That's right. So, but I still don't. So, so you're saying the Rothschilds and the the Bushes and the, all these other people, they. It doesn't really matter to them who's in charge. Then, it's well. It, do, it does, the, because the country is not in charge. Even when, even right now, okay, America is in charge of the world supposedly. Even mm. at that, uh, America is that. not. You know, uh, America is not uh, a singular entity. You know, it, it's it's, you know, the the same way. That, like I said, I talk about the government has been hijacked. Mm -hmm. More like the United Nations is in charge yeah, of Yeah, but even through oh, that... The, those people, the, the, the UN, the, oh my God, those, those people are insane. But the United Nations really only works through the United States. That, oh that, my that's God, my, don't even... It's a puppet. Don't, don't even talk about those people and elevate them to, to even well, be worthy of giving them any they're, any airtime. They're, they're, okay, they're just they're, so they're, stupid. Like, you're like, wasting time here, like, the, uh... What I'm saying is I that want to get back to why it's important for China to be in charge okay, of okay. the new world. If you will stop talking, I will answer your question. I wasn't talking. You were talking. Because I have to go soon. So, yeah. Um, well, go basically, as, far as, as far as China is concerned, their infrastructure and their number of people they're going to become some kind of a force either way, some kind of force that has to be dealt with. And the same way that other governments have been taken over around the world, they have China also. Mm -hmm. You know, China has ha, has been part of this, and there's been an internal battle in China going on as far you know as far as people at the at the head of certain areas of the country. And with the you know the the new Chinese administration is taking over you know this week. Um, Mm -hmm. The the whole thing is moving to another level in terms of policies that are going in. You know, you talk about the the Agenda Twenty One, um, the you know, and, and the 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 direction of China's foreign policy and who they're uh, aligning with. It, either way, it's it's already set up just because of the way that, like I said, the you know, the the way that society is going already. They're already building up their army. You know, they're already. You know, you, you see that that now they're they're looking to you know get an aircraft carrier, for example. Um, that that whole trend, it's going to keep going in that same direction unless someone stops that. You know, they're going to keep building a bigger and bigger army and a bigger navy until 
there's a conflict so somewhere that force it's not going to grow forever it's going to meet something and that that force that it's going to meet is either the united states or russia or you know the european coalition and you know russia is kind of partnered with them now you know but the um as far just because china already has a billion and a half people like that that kind of force you can't just China is getting to the point to where they cannot be controlled without integrating China further. So it's much easier to infiltrate and steer China, which is what this whole thing is about, you know, between the banks and these, and really it's the corporations, it's not just the banks, but now, now the way that the international, uh, you know, economy works, they're beholden to corporations also. Um, it's major corporations. It's mostly right. corporations. Right, right. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. That you know, that they, it, it's beyond just the banks dictating things. It's still mostly the banks because they control the show at the end of the day, unless the banks collapse. You know, based on certain things. But what I'm saying is that ultimately, the the global and, and it's already there. The the global economy with, between corporations and banks. I mean, you know, banks are corporations, but between them, they're, they've already moved, they're more powerful than governments. And the assets that they have are going to outlast, and, and you know, any government, virtually. And it so just that, depends on... So it comes down to revolution. It comes down to, and every, and I say this, and, and I hate these people who have this peace and love, brother and sister attitude. It will always come down to violence always right i mean no one wants to read history that you know what what we're talking about is really <clears throat> you know at some point until people are cold hungry and uncomfortable they're not going to do anything anyway so right now no one's cold hungry and uncomfortable because well, that, that's nobody been my whole point was that that's going to happen well actually i'll take but, but, I'll, I'll jump in on that cold, i'm cold hungry and uncomfortable, and uncomfortable. And there will be a revolution and it will be violent and that, that's exactly my point that, and Bron. Wait, there's the mic. Ann and Bron, I'll tell you what. I'm cold, uh, hungry, and uncomfortable. You know, I'm gonna barely making it by. I don't have a ha need a decent pair of shoes. I got a couple pairs of pants. You know, I mean, you know, this is why I'm here doing it is because it is uncomfortable for me. I've had, uh, I have a lineage where my family is supposedly middle class. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Fuck the middle class. You know why? Right. Because my father, the, or the, the, the man that fathered me, his family has an oil well uh, on his farm. They used to have uh, tankers, ocean ocean liners, things like that. And um, basically the piece of shit never wanted to claim me. So I have no, no inheritance. I have nothing coming to me. And yes, you know, I resent the fact that somebody that comes from that kind of... Um, background uh back in the 70s there was no paternity tests so my mother didn't want to go through with it and she raised me on her own he never volunteered anything and uh you know i met him when i was 18 i look exactly like him i also saw my grandfather distinguishing features there's no way to say that i'm not of that lineage but do i have any help from them now no did i get any help from them as i was growing up no you know, so to me, as far as I'm concerned, the rich, the middle class, whatever, fuck them. I know how to survive. I've lived in the woods. I've lived in the wilderness. Um, I've lived on the streets, the concrete jungle in San Francisco. So as far as I'm concerned, bring on the, the you know, the revolution. I want to see some of these people get off their fat asses, off their couches, get away from the keyboard and start doing something you know the well, number it doesn't they, mean anything they, until they the numbers count numbers they won't do that until they're cold hungry and uncomfortable you're right they're a survivor they're not yeah. but they're not cold hungry and uncomfortable they're fat and they're sitting on their couches well, well it's the same thing with with those people it's the same thing with the governments it's the same thing with companies nobody's all this change people are talking about no one's doing the changes. Well, I shouldn't say that, but a lot of major changes are not being done. And well, just by nature, that that's what's going to lead the whole thing to break in some kind of way, whether it's the economy or the war. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, and, I agree. And out of that comes you're cold, hungry, and tired, and then it's a toss-up. And until then, you know, really, like, we're just kind of, you know, we're, like I said, we don't know when when that's going to break. We're and speculating. Doing, uh, yeah. T- t- tell me I'm wrong. What, what's what's going to happen that's going to, like, Anonymous is going to, like, hack into some, some, some stuff, at, you know, or no, something. No, they're or, not going to do shit. That, that's that exactly my point. I'd like, you know, so, personally, I'd like to see the entire power grid go down. Society, either the economy is going to break because the debt is too much, they can't fix it. It's just a show. So either You're the economy is going to break, or one of these wars is going to pop off. And like right. in, in the interim, there's like we're not doing anything. We're just talking to people that we can wake up. The few you know that we what? can we're find. Just- we're massaging each other because the painfulness of no, what you're no, saying. No, 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 we're not. Like, I, I'm done massaging other people in that way. I, I, that, that's exactly, that's what I'm telling you is to wake up. That there, that the whole thing is good, is, you know, we're trying to change things and we might be doing you good things. You can't start a revolution. Oh, God. Hmm. You cannot start a revolution. You have, the people have to be cold, hungry, and tired. You cannot do it. I don't understand what I'm saying. We're saying the same thing. I'm just telling you how it's going to happen. And you're not listening. I'm I'm always listening. (laughs) I I love you guys. You must be related. Are you guys brother and sister? (laughs) No. I'm I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you in everyday terms about what's going to happen as yeah. far as... I'm not, the, disagree- the, I'm not disagreeing with you, Ron. I'm saying that everything you're saying is absolutely 100% true. And I think all we're doing in the meantime is we're sitting around doing radio shows and talking to people and, and, and they're well, listening and they're saying, yeah, we agree or no, we don't agree or whatever. But the gist of it is that it has to be a revolution that will not happen until people are cold, tired, tired, and hungry. That's right. Well, and 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 that, you know, I mean, we've reached the end point of that. The the only thing that that literally we're doing in this life is we're maintaining ourselves, you know, earning money and feeding ourselves, and waking up the few other people that can be woken up. Other than that, you know, you do what you're, I guess you're doing what makes you happy, you know, what you have to do at that point, but <laughs> that's all it is. You know, we're, we're watching and waiting un- unless, you know, we find some of these things that, you know, that there are wild cards and, you know, that, I mean, hell, that's why I started the website is to, is to mash up the program, but that's, that's literally the only thing that, that this life is about anymore, you know, for, for, for those of us that, that are doing this. I mean, that, that's, and, and that's what I meant about education. That's what we have to get people to see is to move past that whole thing and understand where this is going fast so that they can prepare themselves. And through that, others will come on to that, whether they tell them about it or whether they just notice it in them. You know, Anne, um, Baran, I think that, it, that you know, in the, on the one hand, yeah, we're kind of just stroking ourselves and stroking each other, um, you know, but I do get rebroadcast on uh, several stations, including Global, uh, Citizen Streams, there's a variety of uh, Occupy News Network, people that, that restream this. Uh, I also put this out on Archive, so even though it may not be the most popular or whatnot, but having the topics and the no, discussions... No, I'm not saying you're not reaching anyone. You know, I, I, I didn't say that at all. No, no, I'm not saying you, you were, you know, I mean, well, it's not that it... It's not that it's not reaching, I mean, what we're doing is maybe striking ourselves and the viewers, a lot of them already know about this, and that's why they're joining us, because they agree. But... You know, like I was telling Baron earlier, that's why I go out and I talk to people one-on-one. But I also do the show so I can hit more than one person. And it gets archived, these wonderful conversations that we have, you know, uh, and yeah, yeah, discussing exactly the topics of about. the problems, you know. And, I, you know, I want to move more into not only discussing the, the, the topics, the problems, but solutions to this. How can we solve well, you know, these that, problems? That whole discourse is part of the solution people have to hear that and a lot of people don't know that and and you know that that's kind of right. what i meant is that people spend their whole time doing stuff that doesn't matter or and, and you know i'm not saying anyone on this call is doing that what i'm saying is that we have to find just the right things to do and right. get other people to see that well as always i i enjoy having conversations with you guys i think it's been it's been quite a long show do you uh Think we should call it? Maybe, uh, yeah, call it. That's I'm gonna call yeah, it. Yeah, I gotta make some moves anyway. But <laughs> yeah, I know you said you like had that. some things to do. Uh, thanks, Baron. We'll see you later. Yeah, thank you.
And that thank you. I enjoyed it. All right. Enjoyed it. Bye. And Ann, I want to thank you for coming in and going out and coming back in. Uh, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. And uh, I was um, actually speaking of economy. I was trying to send money to India um, oh. to a very poor person who, when we think of being poor, uh, we have no concept of what poor really is. Uh -huh. um, and uh, the Western Union wasn't open, so mm. I was able to come back a little faster than I wanted to. But. Take care of it tomorrow. So, well, that, that's uh, you have a big heart. That's wonderful of you. You've always been uh, an inspiration. I've seen you doing a lot of good work there. Um, well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us again. I'm with Rick. Thanks for co-hosting and <laughs> doing the intro. And uh, we'll continue with uh, history uh, 102 yeah. tomorrow or the next day. Uh, look for a post on it on Facebook. Occupy the Odyssey or independentcitizenmedia.weebly.com. Uh, I'm your host, Occupy One Liberty, CIA James, Independent Citizen Media. Signing out. Peace. See you.